What's going on, traders? Recap time for the Friday. We finally got a move later on. Now, if you did not watch the last prediction video, link down in description. Get it. Watch it. This is what I went over. I'll give you a small, tiny recap. Let's get my draw pen up. So we were leaning to the short bias, but nothing goes in a straight line. I gave you guys a couple huge point of interest, four of them. One, I said this low break and continuation lower low requires more or less an attack at the gap or like i said in the video before number two i don't care if there's a trend line used from the top of this and a push even higher comes up it is still lean to the downside please check the video number three i gave you the top of the rsi channel something came to the bottom here moved up overnight and number four, right? So three was watching the top of the channel here. He said, if it gets back into the channel in the top on the five day, five minute, it will squeeze out. Watch the video. Let's look at the pre-market. Let's look at the RSI channel and the Mac. Those were the two things that I had talked about prior video. If the RSI channel gets to the top side and the Mac, boom, right here, top of the oscillation channel, top of the oscillation channel, squeezed out over what level do we call last and not least number four four thirty nine fifty right where did it squeeze out a little shaky right here above higher low push right up here's the top of the gap fill also one of the things we said it would squeeze out and go attack look at this after hours dump look at that that was such a big trap and we've seen that coming with the downtrend leaning towards the short side just because we said something could squeeze back up right does not matter. Watch the video. I said we have to have continuation short, which is confirmation under the 10 SMA daily, which is this big old dash blue line. That is a daily 10 SMA inside my intraday chart. Custom codes are for sale like that for BRT. You can check our website for that description below as well. And um, because we did not make it out of the 44450, we were going to still see the downtrend, right? We could squeeze out a little bit, but I gave you three huge caretaking points there that this would still lean to the downside after. Now, um, for today's action here, that, that's, that pretty much sums it up. We had the, the four big. Now, one of the things that I didn't get to do any trades here at all, but I do want to cover some of the oscillation points of that breakout squeeze. And what we've seen. So I told my team to look long. If it recovers, it's going to come back up. Wait for those moving averages to separate a little bit. Obviously, watch the oscillation is key. Here are the biggest key points of the triple oscillation indicator on the bottom. One, RSI base, higher low. Two, no sell wave on the TTM. Went from pullback to pressure up. And where is it? Above the exact level we called. So obviously long. MAC, above zero side and oscillation up even calling the tippy top of the day here as we got a hot rsi ttm backside and mat cross from 12 30 central on you're not looking for any higher than that why because we are still calling for that short side and we are still looking for that pattern of trend to take place after this lower low break caused another lower low which caused a little exhaustion scam pop filled the gap and lost out right back to the 10. now it is still continuation under 10 sma daily and a very strong double doji zone that we have. Now, 438.96, 439.46, that was a really big pocket of uh, over under. Now we called the 439.50 in the last video, and you can see how hard that squeezed, and we actually got under it. Now, coming into next week, if we get to stay under that, right? Because obviously if you jump to short in the last second of the day, you can still pop back up a little bit. Watch the deviation fail, watch the 49 fail, uh, 439.50 fail, coming back down to some of those points of interest. Now, do we finally get it? Let's go to the daily chart. Let's look at why the longer standing timeframes are used for the overall trend and the intraday, even down to the 30, five minute, one minute are the entry timeframes, right? So we got the double top. That was the resistance zone. We had an unfilled gap right here which we had two scenarios with today. It was either going to gap and go to the downside and start heading down to some of our bigger objectives of uh, targets, right? And then we had another one that was going to be a uh, uh, pressure back up to fill that. And that's what we got. And again, just to reiterate those indicators, hot, lower high. Look at that. TTM, lower high. Oscillation cross, dead wave on the MAC. That is a small buy wave. So with those three indicators telling you that the macro thesis is still not going up, you can go into the intraday. And as I said, again, in the last of the video, sell some wide out iron condors, even for today, even zero X race. And I said, as long as you're saying it will not go over 
444.53 for the day. Even if you sold here or here, it does not matter. The weekly was the wide that we were talking about. You could sell iron condors or naked sells either side, whatever your account is um, capable of doing. But this call sell right here above 444.53 would have worked out just fine. We also said it probably won't close above the gap if we push it anyway. So call sell and call sell. So again, if you were to push back up here, Lost the gap after the fill, gone. It definitely did not close anywhere above that gap. And the safety one way up here would have been fine to sell calls in as well, just not quite as profitable. So um, hope you guys tuned in for that last video and that prediction. And let's get into the next. Now we have CPI and a whole bunch of earnings kicking off here next week. So what are we going to see? Well, because of the hike, right? The euphoria of, oh, we're not pausing forever. Most likely we're gonna come back into a hike. This is a filled gap already. Where does that bring us? Well, backtracking the Fibonacci in how we know best. So I'm gonna go to my other one here and I'll show you this target. Now, since we failed the exact 423.60 hit, we will be walking the Fibonacci retracement because they repeat back down to 428.17 and we have an opportunity to come back down for this gap fill right here in the low 420s. Another reason for that is a golden trend test, a back test that we ha still have not suffered a perfect pullback of trend. Not saying that the market's not gonna continue higher, it just can't go much higher right now. Um, needs a pullback, needs a reset. So we're up here in deviation uh, plus two land for a little bit there, recalculated, gave the signal for the double top, came down, now we have two different points of interest. 432 is gonna be interesting because there's a very strong weekly pin there, so don't be surprised if it does a little higher low crack and then rolls back over, but we will end up down near 428.17. That is the next stop, as long as we stay under 432.60. So, option sellers, looking for residual income. Coming into next week, look for a little volatility pop up or a break and retrace, sell and sell. You could do, again, another round of 442 to 444 call spreads. I don't mind that. Uh, you can utilize the gap. You can utilize today's highs. Any one of those, depending on your risk management and how big the account is and what you're ready for, if it does go backwards and does FOMO up more, uh, is what you should take. I personally will be selling 440s again into the end of week, like we said yesterday, and I'm gonna be selling mostly 440s or top of the gap. So anywhere between 440, 442, I'll be selling calls again. This time I'm giving it some time out. Usually I do a day, two, three. I'm most likely, depending on what we look like CPI, even if it is a pop drop, that's where my sell is going to be, get those calls some premium to sell off. I'll be looking at 441, 442 on a pop, even if we don't get it and it slowly comes back down, that's fine. Two weeks minimum. I might actually go out a little farther, but I'm gonna do some two week call sales on 440. We'll see what those premiums open up at at Monday and that'll be just the short term swing. Um, and I'm sure some of you guys have been watching our old pal Nvidia here. Don't wanna give away too much free info there, but um, Nvidia call sales as well. Some of these FOMO ones are very, 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 very hard to short, um, but there are some uh, interesting metrics here that kind of give us uh, incantation of NVIDIA. So another uh, freebie, most, this is everybody's watch most likely on the crazy NVIDIA here. Um, but again, oscillation indicators are giving us lower high scenarios and crosses and heading down at the potential halfway points. So I do still have call sales above 450, call sales above 435.78 now. Um, and adding into that, you could even grab some puts, some regular puts. I'm not overly in love with just buy. I really like when the premium is working uh, opposite of me, I don't want to lose. I like to sell on time. So um, looks like there's a micro gap there. Let me check that real quick. Is there a micro gap on the video today? I didn't even notice it. Oh yeah, yesterday's close, yesterday's highs. Uh, the gap finder is saying there is one, but it could be off by about a penny. Okay, so Nvidia. Nevertheless, um, a couple of nice rejections with standard deviation plus one up here again on the daily, not quite the weekly, but we do have really good oscillation here. Now coming down from this, I'm only looking for like an easy target hit of sub 400 into the 390s. So when I sell calls up here for months at a time, I'm just expecting it, even if it does rally back up, it's not gonna go over our 423.60 extension. Again, this was a Fibonacci extension we just timed the top of the SPY with. You can see how close Nvidia is to that. So selling into here, even if there's an abrupt reverse, uh, for whatever reason happens to be, just that FOMO craziness, uh, fine by me, I'll just roll and continue on shorting that 450, um, selling those calls. Uh, that would be fine. Targeting on the long uh, put side, when you're coming back down, I'd probably buy something like 410s or 405s because the um, spreads are big here, but any way that we're gonna get ITM down here to sub 400 for this gap fill into a lower low to potentially push back up to find back trend to start coming back down 
uh, to that earnings gap up into the mid 300s uh, will be fantastic. But uh, I still stand by this call right here that we won't see much higher than 450. Now, that has a lot of work to do to uh, prove me wrong here. Now, can it? Oh, of course, the market is going to do whatever it wants to do. But oscillation is starting to peak even at weekly now where we're getting a little bit of oscillation downside here. It doesn't mean much the first or second time in these FOMO MOMO moves where, you know, oscillation started to cool down a little bit right here that it took off, cool down right here, here and here and still took off. Those had obvious catalyst pertaining moves outside of technical analysis, obviously earnings. So we can't look at that. Um, as a whole shot, but right now having no catalyst to disrupt this extremely hot uh, move, it is time to continually increase the call ceiling at 450 on Nvidia, or even take some puts down to the sub 390. Um, and then you can attack that huge daily gap that we got, obviously on that earnings ramp up here. And you're gonna be walking it back down to 318 at very best case scenario. That is still above that gap fill. But if Nvidia starts to turn back around and we do get a little bit of relax here, even at least to the first gap or into moving averages, we will have a good amount of time to keep selling high sell calls. So keep an eye on that. I told you what I'm gonna be picking up there and continuing to roll on. And that should be it. So I hope you guys benefited from the last video, learned a little something. Tune in for the next.